Hi everyone, I'm here again with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being here, Dr. Nario. Hi Steve, thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure. All right, if you guys know, you've been watching the channel. Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center. They're in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online, uh, find their website pretty easily and find out more about uh, the things that they do at Biointegrative Health Center. So we're going to talk about intermittent fasting. The studies come and go, you know, really fast on all kinds of different things. And, you know, my thing, I always say everyone's different. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this fairly new study about intermittent fasting. So first, just tell us the, the basics about this study. Well, Steve, and uh, this is a new headline that actually shocked the world and where I got the flood, I got flooded with questions from not only my patients, but also my colleagues and friends about this. Because recently the American Heart Association and specifically the Epidemiology and Prevention Lifestyle Conference that they had headlined and it said, eight hour time restricted eating link to a 91% higher risk of cardiovascular death. And this is actually a 2024 abstract that um, when, when they presented it. And you have to remember that this type of diet has been uh, becoming popular with the likes of like Elon Musk, Jennifer Aniston, and even Rishi Sunak. The, the, the diet trend called intermittent fasting probably refer maybe to be more accurate as time-restricted eating. Many different versions of intermittent fasting have come and gone over the years. Well, the current flavor is to eat only a specific time of the day, hence the refinement to time restricted eating. And here are the different types, 16, eight, we heard of that, 16 hours a day of fasting and then restricting eating to an eight hour window, five, two, meaning uh, five days of the week, um, you're, and you're actually gonna be eating. And then two would be just 500 to 600 calories alternate day 500 to 600 calories on the days that are your non-fasting and then on the fasting days um you i mean meaning uh, you can definitely um just do the fast and in different alternating days there eat stop uh, that's another one this is going to be individuals fast for full 24 hours once or twice a week even the warrior diet as they mentioned that involves fasting for 20 hours each day and consuming all calories within a four hour eating window um, typically in the evening. And then OMAD, that's another popular one, one meal a day, involves fasting for 23 hours and consuming yeah, the, the rest uh, with the, the hour that is left. And then spontaneous no skipping. So we just do this naturally just because we're so busy. And the newer one is circadian rhythm schedule, which is the 12-12, eating when the sun is out and then not eating when the sun is down. So those are just specific variations of, of the... Uh, uh, intermittent fasting. Okay, so um, what did this specific study, you, you mentioned a little bit about 91% increase in heart disease for people who do intermittent fast? Yes, this is more specific to the one who is doing the eight hour time restricted. So 816, basically. Uh, so yeah, 16, eight. Yeah. I have a hard time. I'm, I'm trying to connect the dots there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, give me some details on um, what, what the findings of the study were. Right. Well, let's talk about how they did the study uh, initially. And this is, again, how, how hairs raised because of such cringing um, information about something we know that is really healthy, Steve. In the study, participants completed two separate food questionnaires about what they ate over the past 24 hours. Deaths were recorded in the CDC and Prevention National Death Index, and researchers had an average of eight years worth of follow-up data on over 20,000 participants. Those who ate their daily meals within an eight-hour window, they fasted for more than 16 hours a day, had more cardiovascular mortality than the control group, which ate during a 12 to 16-hour window. They are ate fairly consistently throughout the day, comparing these two groups, the 16-8 dieters had a 91 increased risk for cardiovascular death. 
So you would notice there that, of course, the shorter uh, duration of fasting has the one with a higher morta cardiovascular mortality. And the ones that are doing it longer obviously are safer. That's what they're saying. Hmm. So, well, a questionnaire. That's how they did the study mm -hmm. was they asked correct. people questions. That is correct. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. That's or, right. But, okay. I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'll let you talk. <laughs> but uh, um, so um, do you see any flaws, any flaws with this study? Of course there are flaws, Steve, as you, can, you yourself felt it. <laughs> so, but let, let's, let's dissect this study down for everybody to really understand that uh, we are looking at false information here. So one, the press coverage was based on unpublished, non-peer-reviewed results. Media outlets highlighted preliminary research, but also the American Heart Association promoted it. There is nothing wrong with poster presentations, preliminary research, but there should be more screening before presenting it for public consumption. A, a good example where media wanted to exploit something juicy for public reaction. As I mentioned to you, this was an abstract, right, when they put it out there. Next would be it's an observational study and therefore prone to confounding results. Always we hear about the higher accuracy of randomized control trials. Those are the ones that really brings in the information and the val validity of, of information. Third would be researchers didn't have information on the quality of the study participants diet. If someone breaks their 16 hour fast with ultra processed food, for example, or junk food, the type of food might be relevant to long-term cardiovascular health than when it was eat, uh, when what they're in relation to what they're eating. People may have engaged in intermittent fasting because they had shift work, for example, also, or an irregular sleep schedule, which are independent cardiovascular risk factors again. It also is possible that people adopted time restricting eating as a dietary strategy precisely because they were already sick from a cardiovascular condition. Suffice to say, many other external factors might be at play here. Number four would be dietary patterns were assessed, this is was your point, using a two to 24 hour questionnaires. And the dietary questionnaires are notoriously unreliable and subject to poor recall of participants. But here the problem is more marked because dietary fads or patterns will wax and wane in popularity. Compliance with most diets is a problem. Using a single time endpoint to assess such diet, which by nature changes and fluctuates with time, will not be a true reflection of someone's overall diet. And lastly, participants were not divided in an intermittent fasting group and a control group. Uh, they were divided into subgroups based on eating, like less than eight hours, eight to 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours. And then the reference group was 12 to 16 hours and more than 16 hours. Always should be uh, the control group in a clinical trial is the group that does not receive the new treatment being studied. Uh, this group is compared to a group that received the new treatment to see if the new treatment works. So as you can see that there is there are some hits here that we should question the study and still stand by with the benefits of intermittent fasting. Okay, so uh, I, do you know if they had this question on there? Um, did they ask people if they broke their fast with cigarettes and alcohol? <laughs> no. That's the problem. So that's why all of these are just, again, just the mere fact of a questionnaire makes you question it. You need to run a study with an actual clinical team to assess the outcomes of people to, to really, you, have, you need to have good metrics. That's what I'm saying, like blood pressure, uh, blood levels, um, cholesterol panel. So these are the good things that really will tell you what data is important and what is not. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I just want to get your final thoughts on the, or uh, your, your conclusion on this. I can already kind of guess what it's going to be. And I know, look, everyone's different. If you guys watch the channel, you hear me say that all the time. I know you doc, you're, you're more of a, you like the flexitarian diet, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That, that works for you. That, I mean, you're healthy. You're, you're I'm sure oh. you look at your blood work all the time. You know, mm -hmm. you're a, you're a flexitarian. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, but we're all different. Right. And so I just think that that has to be taken into consideration also. Correct. And, um, you know, I, I, I 
pretty much, you know, I don't eat. It's rare for me to eat after five or six o'clock at night. Good. It's rare. So even if I'm going to eat a fairly early breakfast, you know, I get up at seven. Even if I'm going to eat a fairly early breakfast, I've got a pretty long stint there where I haven't eaten, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And what about all the studies that say you shouldn't eat past such and such? And, you know, so anyway, this is a fairly new one. So your finer, your final conclusion for you and your patients as a doctor, uh, an integrative physician, what's your final conclusion on this? Well, Steve, it's always a win for intermittent fasting, as I say. 12 to 14 hours is the key for ketosis to occur. So this is meaning, of course, we want to burn fat and use it as energy. And just to remind our viewers, the benefits, the un, unsurmountable amount of evidential uh, material that, that uh, the backs up intermittent fasting, weight loss and fat loss. During fasting periods, the body relies on stored fat for energy, improve metabolic health, improve various markers of metabolic health, such as insulin sensitivity, blood sugar levels, even cholesterol levels, enhance brain function, reduce the risk of neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, Increase autophagy, removal of damage or dysfunctional components with the, of the cell uh, in, in, our, in our system that actually protects aging, promotes cellular repair, and reduce certain diseases. Reduces inflammation, reduces markers of inflammation, which may help lower the risk of in, inflammatory diseases in the future. Longevity. The majority of the studies of this usually observed in animal studies, but still, it actually is backed up. Some, some small studies are out there for intermittent fasting. And just the plain simplicity and convenience. Intermittent fasting can be relatively easy to implement and adhere to compared to traditional calorie restricted diets. It does not require specific foods or meal plans and keep, can be adapted to fit any individual preference and even lifestyle. Basically, it's cheap. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah, that's true. You know, I just got a last thing I'd say, you know, is, uh, you know, today I ate a banana. And that's kind of rare for me. And and yesterday I ate an apple, but so I brought four ba bananas home yesterday. And uh, my wife says, uh, "You bought bananas? Yeah, they're organic, you know." Mm -hmm. She goes, "You bought bananas?" And I looked at him. I said, "Yeah, I bought four of them, and now there's only three there. What happened to one of them?" <laughs> so well, variation is key. You need to change whatever you're eating so the body cannot. Get used to it. So change it all the time. She ate one of my bananas. Oh, there we go. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. That's how it went from four to three. Oh, <laughs> so snuck one in there. Yeah, I'm like going, one is missing. What happened to it? <laughs> she just gets this little smirk on her face. She's the culprit. <laughs> all right. All right, Doc. Uh, appreciate your insight on this and your opinion. Thank you for being with us. Well, Steve, thank you again, as we all know that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.